Originally, the group was formed by schoolmates Liam Gallagher, Paul Bonehead Arthurs, Paul McGuigan, and Tony McCarroll. After spending several years as the guitar technician for a Stone Roses-inspired group named the Inspiral Carpets, Noel Gallagher returned to Manchester to find that his brother had formed a band. Noel agreed to join if he could have complete control of the group, including contributing all the songs the rest of the band agreed and adopted a new name Oasis, before launching a year of intensive rehearsals. After playing a handful of small club gigs, the band cornered Alan McGee, the head of Creation Records, and forced him to listen to their demo. Impressed, he signed the band and helped them ready their debut album. The group released their first single Supersonic in the spring of 1994, it edged its way into the charts on the back of positive reviews. With a melody adapted from I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing, Shakermaker became a bigger hit in the early summer. Released a month before their debut album's arrival, the soaring ballad Live Forever became a major hit in England and helped make definitely maybe the fastest-selling debut in British history. The record entered the charts at number one and eventually sold over 7 million copies. Oasis Mania continued throughout 1994, as the group began playing larger theaters and watched each new single outperform the last. However, tensions in the group began to build Liam and Noel refused to do joint interviews because they always fought, and Noel Gallagher briefly left the band at the end of a difficult fall American tour. However, he quickly rejoined and the band headed back to England. As Supersonic began to climb the US album Rock and Modern Rock charts, the string laden would ever a hit number two over the British Christmas season. At the beginning of 1995, the group set their sights on America by promoting the single Live Forever. The song became a major hit on MTV and modern rock radio stations, peaking at number two and definitely maybe soon climbed to gold status in the US returning to England after a sold-out American tour, the group recorded a new single some might say. Drummer Tony McCarroll parted ways with the band on the eve of the single's May release, with Alan White taking his place. Some might say entered the charts at number one, and its success led to all of Oasis' previous singles re-entering the indie charts. Oasis spent the rest of the summer completing their second album What's the Story Morning Glory, which was released in October of 1995. Upon its release, the album shot to number one in England, becoming the fastest-selling album in the UK since Michael Jackson's Bad. The band continued to set records during the following years, over the course of 1996, What's the Story Morning Glory became the second biggest British album in history. On the strength of the iconic single Wonderwall, Morning Glory also became a top 10 success in America, where it reached quintuple platinum status, it also cracked the top 10 throughout countries in Europe and Asia. During 1996, the Gallagher's combative relationship was frequently detailed in newspapers and gossip columns, particularly when they suddenly pulled out of their late summer US tour. This followed the group's two concerts at Nebworth, which broke records for being the biggest outdoor concert in England. After Oasis abandoned their American tour, they concentrated on recording their third album. While the band's first two LPs were quickly recorded, they took several months to record the third, which finally saw completion during the spring of 1997. The resulting album Be Here Now was released in late August, one month after the arrival of the single Do You Know What I Mean. Greeted with generally enthusiastic reviews and robust sales, Be Here Now shattered sales records in the UK and nearly topped the US charts, positioning the quintet as the de facto rulers of rock. However, a backlash set in among both critics and record buyers over the album's perceived excesses, which meant that Be Here now lacked the shelf life of its predecessors. Not long afterward, typical infighting unraveled the band's tour, and the group disappeared from the spotlight for a time, although a collection of B-Sides' master plan did follow in 1998. As the band was recording their fourth album in the summer of 1999, Bonehead left Oasis, claiming that he wanted to spend more time with his family. Interviewed by NME on August 11, the day after the departure was made public, Noel Gallagher seemed unfazed, stating it's hardly Paul McCartney leaving the Beatles. Ex-Ride guitarist Andy Bell and one-time heavy stereo guitarist Jem Archer signed on after the recording of 2000 Standing on the Shoulder of Giants was completed. In fall 2000, the band celebrated their monumental world tour success with the release of their first ever live record, Familiar to Millions. 
The album highlights Oasis July 2000 gig at Wembley Stadium and was released on six different formats including CD and cassette, DVD, VHS, triple vinyl and minidisc. Two years later, Oasis surfaced with Heathen Chemistry. Worldwide dates coincided the release of Oasis' fifth studio album, however problems loomed ahead. While touring America in late summer, Noel Gallagher, Andy Bell, and touring keyboardist Jay Darlington were injured in Indianapolis after their taxi collided with another vehicle. The band bounced back soon, returning to the road in two weeks' time after cancelling shows in Indianapolis, Boston, and Philadelphia. In America, the album wasn't faring as well as Oasis tour sales, and the lead-off single Hindu Times barely made a mark on MTV. More trouble arrived in December, when Liam Gallagher and several members of the Oasis entourage were involved in a street scuffle in Munich, the younger Gallagher sustained facial injuries and was later arrested while two of the band's security guards sought serious medical attention. Despite such setbacks, which also included mixed reviews for the album Heathen Chemistry nevertheless sold several million copies at home and charted four UK singles. Additionally, Liam's own composition Songbird, marked the first time Oasis had released a single penned by anyone other than Noel. The song fared well on UK charts and paved the way for a new collaborative approach to songwriting. Oasis' next album suffered delays, as initial sessions with the electronica duo Death in Vegas were scrapped. Additionally, drummer Alan White made his exit from the band in early 2004, and Zach Starkey climbed aboard to take his place. Don't Believe the Truth eventually saw a worldwide release in May 2005. Featuring songwriting contributions from every band member, the record represented a new approach from the previously Noel-dominated group. Lila, the importance of being idle, and Let There Be Love all contributed to the album's success, and Don't Believe the Truth soon became the band's highest-selling effort since Be Here Now. The band quickly returned to the studio in mid-2007, halting production several months later to allow Noel to spend time with his newborn child. Sessions resumed in November and wrapped up in 2008, with Dig Out Your Soul receiving a release date later that year. In 2009, after a typically heated, backstage sibling altercation, Noel left the group for good, prompting Liam to change the name to BDI, with plans to release a debut single in 2010.